Hey, I'm Gavin Bishop. I'm a second year medical student at the University of Otago, and I also tutored the Hubs paper at Arana College. Over the course of the year, I've had loads of people ask me a whole bunch of questions about med. So today I'll run you through how the course is set up, uh, the distribution of time between lectures, labs, and tutorials, uh, what my calendar looks like, some comparisons between health sci and medicine, and some specific bits of advice kind of randomly sprinkled through. This is basically the vid that I wish I had before I went into med school, and to be honest, in high school would have been preferable. There'll be a whole bunch of timestamps down below if you want to skip through things. Let's get into it. So I'm currently in ELM2. This makes me a second year medical student, but it's my first year at medical school. You can get to medical school in a few ways, for instance, the supergrad pathway, the postgrad pathway, or through health sciences first year. Once you're in, you spend a year in ELM2, then another year in ELM3, and then after that, the cohort splits into three, with a third going to Wellington, another third going to Christchurch, and another third staying in Dunedin. There's also the other option of taking a year out and doing a research year, which then also might follow on to doing more research. But assuming you decide to go to one of those campuses, you'll be then in ALM. ALM stands for Advanced Learning Medicine. ALM4 um, and ALM5, you spend kind of doing rotations um, through different hospitals, learning a bunch of things. In other words, it's uh, Latin for Bachelor of Surgery and Bachelor of Medicine. But really, you haven't finished med school because after this, you have the TI year. The TI year stands for the Training Intern Year. During this year, you get your $26,000 grant. After that, you become a house officer, which is split into the FY1 and FY2 years. And then after that, you become a registrar, which is when you start specializing. The structure of ELM is less of a single unified course and more like 21 subjects hiding under their own trench coat. These subjects each have their own department and organize themselves individually and they try to sync up with each other but honestly sometimes it can get pretty chaotic. These 21 subjects can be divided into three categories. These are block modules, vertical modules, and programs. Let's start with block modules. They're also known as horizontal modules. These are based on body systems. Their teaching is done in a chunk in one point in the year instead of the whole way through. Just kind of like the way Hubs 191 and Hubs 192 are taught. They also focus on anatomy and physiology, which is a lot like Hubs, except for psych med, which is a bit of an outlier. So in ELM2, which is what I'm in, we started with that outlier psych med, then around the start of April, we moved on to musculoskeletal, and then around the end of May, we moved on to cardiovascular. Now we're on respiratory at the moment, then we'll move on to GI soon, and that will be five block modules to cover the year. Unlike block modules, vertical modules are subjects that teach the whole year, multiple years even. At any given point, they usually try to sync up with whatever the block module and therefore the body system um, is teaching. So at the moment we're doing RESP and the other day we had a lecture on cystic fibrosis, a genetics tutorial on screening for cystic fibrosis and a pathology tutorial on pneumonia. Um, both of these are conditions, cystic fibrosis and pneumonia are conditions of the respiratory system but other times the content doesn't exactly sync up. So we had a lecture in blood on anemia the other day, and we have a professional development lecture on integrity in a couple of days. So they don't really fit in exactly, but they're important things that need to be learned nonetheless. After the five block modules and 13 vertical modules, we have the three programs. These are clinical skills, early professional experience, which everyone calls EPE, and integrated cases, which everyone calls cases. With each of them, you have a single two-hour tutorial every week, which makes them the most consistent part of medical school that exists at all. Um, plus you have prep, like beforehand. Um, clinical skills is full of skills that you would actually use to be a doctor. Um, so we're talking how to take blood pressures, how to interview a patient correctly, and how to use a stethoscope. Um, in EPE, you kind of take a step away from like the biomedical stuff that you're learning all the time and kind of talk more about relationships, social contexts, grief, addiction, well-being, things like that. Yeah, like Are we you... really going to say kick the bucket? <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, integrated cases, which everyone calls cases as I said, um, kind of integrates all the stuff. Uh, which you learn everywhere else into different scenarios with patients and you kind of work through these questions in a booklet uh, with your tutor group in a room that looks like this. My tutorial yesterday for instance focused on cystic fibrosis. 
Right, so you've got this whirlwind of 21 subjects hurtling at you. Every tutorial and lab requires prep. So let's talk about where in the world you do all these things and how you keep all of it organized. So instead of having lectures on campus, we actually have them right up against the hospital in a lecture theater called Calhoun. And this is the Hunter Center. So the Hunter Center is basically where we have all our tutorials, um, whether those are just course tutorials, that's clinical skills, cases, and EPE, or just the miscellaneous tutorials for like any of the module. Sweet, let's go in. So this is what it looks like inside. This is called the atrium. Um, basically a huge kind of dining area, study area for whatever you want to do. People can just hang out in here. And then right at the top, you can see all of the uh, different study spaces up there. And over on the side are the tutorials. Right, so we're back outside the Hunter Center now. Right there across the street, you can kind of see uh, the intersection. Over there is Calhoun, where we have lectures, the Health Sciences Library, and also Linda Ferguson's building. So let's just get over there real quick. Sciences Library. Basically, if you want to do any study that's uh, and book at a room that's not like in Central, that's where you go. And then all of our lectures are in Calhoun, just spelled with a Q, of course, um, up these concrete steps. We have weekday competitions for kindergartners, and we also have a community day on Saturday. Let's go to the Linda Ferguson building, which is down the street over there. You want to come up and take a look? So yeah, this is the Linda Ferguson building. Pretty awesome old building with concrete all over it. Beautiful architecture. Let's go check out inside. So you'll be here a lot for different types of labs, whether physiology labs, anatomy labs, dissection labs, and there's a few different floors, so make sure you know which one you're on. By the way, just like in Hellside, you wear mufti or normal clothes to everything. If you see people going around in scrubs, they're probably dead students. So to recap, lectures at Calhoun, tutorials at Hunter, labs at the Linda Ferguson, Hunter, and the microbiology building. Right, so how is everything organized? Well, first of all, at med school, we use Moodle instead of Blackboard, which in a lot of ways is basically the same, but here's two really important things to know. On Moodle, there's this page called My Groups, which basically lists out all the tutorial groups that you will be in throughout the year for all of the random things. This is really important to know how to get to. You will certainly be lost, be late, and be really struggling to find this page. I really recommend just screenshotting it and having a safe place to save it. Number two, eVision is a pain and forces you to manually transfer your timetable over into your personal calendar, whereas at med school we use Moodle and there's a live link which automatically updates your own personal calendar, so whether it's Google Calendar or Apple Calendar, and makes everything really easy and updates for you. Speaking of calendars, this is what my timetable looks like. So the timetable runs from 9 to 6 with a one hour lunch break between 1 and 2. Uh, you can see Monday is pretty full on. I've got two toots, uh, so those will be at Hunter, and then one lab, so makes a six hour day, whereas Wednesday is pretty light, I've only got like two lectures. The programs will always be in the same spot every week, as I said, the one consistency throughout med school. Uh, lectures are also pretty consistent, but everything else is just super all over the place from week to week. Here's last week, the week before, and a whole bunch more. Side note, your entire ELM cohort is divided into four streams at the start of the year. There's an A, B, C, and D. I'm in stream C. Uh, everyone in your stream is who you do all your tutorials and labs with, whereas you'll have lectures with everyone in the entire stream at Calhoun at the same time. So here's a breakdown of how the time has been spent this semester. You can see it's a bit all over the place, there's a bit of consistency, but some weeks you have lots of labs and some weeks you don't. Basically, you end up spending roughly the same amount of time in tutorials and labs as you do in lectures in Calhoun. That is, if you actually go to lectures in Calhoun as opposed to uh, streaming them on two times speed later. Anyway, that makes out a total average of about 23 hours a week in med uh, versus like 16 hours of contact time in health sciences. People ask me whether I feel I have more free time now that I'm in medical school compared to when I was in health sci, and I gotta say the answer is pretty nuanced. Like, 
there's definitely a lot more prep and content and contact time in medical school compared to health sciences. But I also have found a whole bunch of strategies in order to work through those a lot more efficiently than I could have ever done in first year. There's also way less unhealthy competitive attitude, which to be honest, I didn't experience too much of in my first year, but I certainly know people who did. So it's really cool that the whole med cohort is really just keen on tackling everything together. While we're comparing the two, I definitely say that Halsai is a bit like drinking from a water fountain and you want to take as much in as you can, whereas being in med is more like drinking from a fire hose. A doctor I know told me that I'm going to forget more this year than I've ever learned in my life. And so far, he's definitely been right. So that's the video. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Facebook. Thanks for watching.